one of the greatest monarchs England has ever had was Queen Elizabeth I, the final Tudor monarch who would during her reign defeat her enemies with ruthlessness. Elizabeth became known for defeating the Spanish Armada, which would also condemn her cousin Mary Queen of Scots, who had been found plotting against her. Elizabeth I would in her final days be a shadow of her former self, and she would become lonely and upset as many of her friends passed away, and the Queen began to ponder her life as she would rue the decisions she made. But Elizabeth I was a Queen who was greatly loved by her population, and she was the Tudor monarch that her father Henry VIII greatly wanted. But Elizabeth was the final Tudor Queen and ruler, and she would never marry or have any children. Join us today as we look at crazy facts you did not know about Queen Elizabeth I, and believe me, there's some really strange ones. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. One of the most tragic moments of Elizabeth I's life saw her lose her mother at just the age of two. But her mother Anne Boleyn was the second wife of her father King Henry VIII and Anne was incredibly divisive. She was not the most well liked to cross England and at one point some women even tried to abduct Anne as she was seen as a home wrecker. But Anne Boleyn's downfall would come with the plotting of Henry VIII from Cromwell and the king got tired of the fact she would not give him a son and the male heir that he greatly wanted. A web of lies and deceit was spun against Anne, and with this she would lose her head inside of the Tower of London, as a French swordsman would condemn Anne quickly and sharply. But with the swing of the sword, Elizabeth, the princess, lost her mother, and she lost a woman whose reputation would scar her for many years. The father of Elizabeth I was King Henry VIII, the infamous and brutal King of England, who would become known for his six wives. His daughter Elizabeth would inherit her father's brutal side at times, but her father would cause a significant amount of heartbreak for his daughter. It's believed Henry did love Elizabeth, but following her mother Anne Boleyn's death inside of the Tower of London, Elizabeth on the 1st of July 1536 was removed from the line of succession effectively barring her from the throne, and because of this it was believed that she would never become the Queen of England. It was only with the death of her half-brother Edward that Elizabeth and her half-sister Mary's fortunes would change, as they were restored to the line of succession. But in an act of shame against her mother, Henry VIII did remove Elizabeth from this. Not the greatest move from the father of the year. Elizabeth's early life was not easy and she would be passed from different households and following the death of her father, Elizabeth went to live with Catherine Parr, Henry VIII's sixth wife. Catherine was considered a brilliant educator and a woman ahead of her time. However, whilst inside of Catherine Parr's care and household, Elizabeth was preyed upon by Parr's husband, Thomas Seymour. Seymour married Catherine following the king's death and many believe he was jumping into the bed of the dead king. But Seymour was power obsessed and he would flirt and act inappropriately towards Princess Elizabeth and at times he even slapped her on the backside and would engage in inappropriate horseplay with her. This upset Elizabeth's governess as she did report Seymour's behaviour inside of Elizabeth's bedchamber. Today Elizabeth is believed to have been groomed by Seymour and he would ask her a number of times to marry following the death of Catherine Parr but Seymour the power obsessed maniacal beast will lose his head upon Tower Hill. It's not known if incidents like this with Seymour led to Elizabeth remaining celibate throughout her life because of the abuse she suffered at the hands of Thomas Seymour. Elizabeth throughout her education was said to have been a brilliant student and she had a very big aptitude for learning, but she was known to have been able to speak and read seven different languages. This was seen as a good thing for princesses and it's possible that this was thrown onto Elizabeth to help her one day find a European husband who could secure alliances between England and European nations. If her brother Edward VI would have lived longer, it's likely he would have used Elizabeth as a way to secure power with other lands and he may have married her off. But Elizabeth herself was a very clever young woman. One of the darkest times of Elizabeth's life was when she was imprisoned 
inside of the Tower of London. The young princess was one of the most infamous inmates of the fortress, which was held by her sister Mary I during the early days of her reign, as it was believed Elizabeth could have been plotting against her. Elizabeth got to the Tower on the 17th of March 1554, and it's believed that she entered through Traitor's Gate. However, she would walk over a drawbridge, and when she came into the Tower, guards knelt before her. Elizabeth was held in the former apartments that her mother was before her execution, and the Tower's influence had a strong impact on Elizabeth's mental health, as she believed she would be dispatched in the same way as her mother was. She was allowed a few luxuries in the Tower, and was allowed to go for walks in the gardens, but as time went on, things became more tough. She was accused of being involved in Wyatt's rebellion, and every time she was questioned, the clever princess could not be caught out, and she did evade the executioner's block. But her time inside of the Tower of London had a profound effect on the future queen, and she would then be released to house arrest after two months in the Tower. But the next time she went to the Tower of London, it would be under happier circumstances, as she would await her coronation at the Tower, as was tradition. But she could have easily been condemned by her sister, and gone the same way as her mother, within the same walls of the infamous prison. When Elizabeth I came onto the throne, with her reign beginning on the 17th of November 1558, many people across England were very sceptical about a woman being on the throne. Before her half-sister Mary's short but diabolical reign, there had only been men on the throne of England. But Mary's reign had brought in a lot of turbulence to the nation, as she would sharply return England to Catholicism. But Elizabeth then had to revert the religious changes yet again, as she was Protestant. But because of her gender, many were not comfortable with having a queen rule. But eventually Elizabeth became the best Tudor monarch of the lot. Her actions in defeating the Spanish Armada and seeing off of her threats, led so many to turn in their beliefs about Elizabeth. One episode of her queenship and life that greatly affected Elizabeth was her health, and she did have a brush with death when she got smallpox. This was a very deadly disease, and those who often caught smallpox would be dead within days, but Elizabeth caught the disease, and despite being very ill, she would get over it but smallpox and her experiences of the disease would live with her until the day she died, and she was left badly scarred by the pox on her face. This left Elizabeth to believe that she was ugly, and she would spend a large amount of money buying fashionable makeup from Europe to cover up these scars. But much of this makeup that Elizabeth used was toxic and poisonous, and it would be made from lead, and some historians have gone as far as to believe that these beauty accessories would lead to the death of the Queen from blood poisoning. But Elizabeth's scars were a big source of upset for her, and she believed she would never find a husband because of this, and Elizabeth's paintings would be doctored and altered to not include her imperfections. As well as wearing a lot of makeup, which made her appear incredibly white, and often looking like a clown, Elizabeth also wore large red wigs. Despite having red hair initially, as she got older this would fade to grey, and she would then wear large wigs to show her having beautiful large plumage and hair. She believed this looked attractive, and these wigs at the time were made by the best and most famous wig makers of Europe, and they would cost a huge sum of money. But to Elizabeth who wanted to try and preserve her youth and beauty, they were seen as a necessity. Interestingly, this was also the fashion as other monarchs would also wear wigs, Mary Queen of Scots wore one to her execution. The man who it's believed was the closest to marrying Queen Elizabeth I was Robert Dudley, the Earl of Leicester, who many believe may have even slept with the Queen. They certainly had a close relationship and would have admitted to each other that they did love one another. Elizabeth would throughout her time with Dudley rue the fact she believed that she could not marry him and Dudley would be married to Amy Dudley. But Amy would die under very suspicious circumstances. She was found at the bottom of a set of stairs, and many at court believed that Robert, and even Elizabeth, were responsible for her death and murder. It was said of her death, There came to me bowels, by whom I do understand that my wife is dead, 
and as he saith by a fall from a pair of stairs, little of understanding can I have of him. The greatness and suddenness of such misfortune doth so perplex me, until I do hear from you how the matter standeth, or how this evil should light upon me, considering what the malicious world will brew it, as I can take no rest, and this is what Dudley said. But many believe that Amy Dudley died because Robert wanted to marry Queen Elizabeth, and there were deep investigations into this, and later Robert would be cleared of this. But the rumours would severely dent Robert Dudley's chances of marrying the Queen, and they damaged her reputation too, and a match was then said to be too controversial. But when Elizabeth did get smallpox in October 1562, she asked the Privy Council to appoint one Robert Dudley as a protector of the realm while she was incapacitated. Her relationship with Dudley was strange and complex, and Elizabeth would even offer him up to marry Mary Queen of Scots at one point. But when Dudley would remarry one of her ladies, she became furious and it took her a long time to trust him again. Many of the biggest problems for Elizabeth I centred around her possible suitors and matches for a husband. She would choose no one at the end of the day, but one of those who was considered was the husband of her dead half-sister, Philip II of Spain. Philip had a rather miserable marriage with Mary I, and Philip believed he had a genuine claim to the English throne, and he was the king of the most powerful country in the world, Spain. But Elizabeth would turn down Philip, who proposed marriage to her, but eventually war would exist between England and Spain, which resulted in the launching of the Spanish Armada, which Elizabeth and her forces would with some luck somehow manage to withstand and defeat. The Elizabethan court was known to have been a place of rich culture and entertainment, and during her time on the throne, there was a huge change and shift in the arts. In particular, writers such as Shakespeare were perfecting their craft, and even the best new plays were performed in the royal household for the Queen. During her reign, there were a number of theatres which were also built across Europe, and people then began to spend their afternoons watching plays in these. One of the most infamous executions of her reign was when Elizabeth dispatched privy councillors to inform Mary Queen of Scots that she would die the following morning. Mary had been kept under lock and key for almost two decades by the English Queen, and she for Catholics was seen as a genuine claimant to the throne, and Catholics wanted Mary to be Queen over the Protestant Elizabeth. Mary was held in good confines to begin with, but then she became the focus of a number of treasonous plots, each of these would see Elizabeth killed and Mary placed on the throne. But Mary would consent to these plots, and she was involved in particular in the Babington plot. This led to Elizabeth's spymaster discovering what Mary was involved in, then she was brought to trial for treason and was condemned to death. But Mary Queen of Scots was an anointed monarch, one it's believed was sent by God to rule, so how could Elizabeth go against God and condemn her? She deliberated for months over signing the death warrant, and eventually she was convinced to do so, and in the walls of Fotheringhay Castle, and in particular in the Great Hall, Mary Queen of Scots on the 8th of February 1587 lost her head at the age of 44. It was a botched execution and did not go well, and was a humiliating end for the former Scottish Queen. Elizabeth would be haunted by this for the rest of her days, and she would believe that this would prevent her getting into heaven one day, when she lied on her deathbed. The Archbishop of Canterbury, when Elizabeth was dying, had to promise the English Queen that Mary's execution would have no impact on her being a Queen in heaven. On the 9th of August 1588, Elizabeth I made an iconic speech to her soldiers and sailors at Tilbury Docks, which has become a defining moment in British history. The Tilbury docks was filled with sailors and troops who were tasked with defending England from the Spanish Armada, and Elizabeth rode out wearing a metal breastplate on a white horse, and many said she looked like the goddess Athena. She said in her speech, I know I have the body of a weak and feeble woman, but I have the heart and stomach of a king, and of a king of England too, and think foul scorn that Palmer or Spain, or any prince of Europe, 
should dare to invade the borders of my realm, to which rather than any dishonour shall grow by me, I myself will take up arms, I myself will be your general, judge, and rewarder of every one of your virtues in the field. This speech was earth-shattering, it inspired the soldiers, and many believed their queen was their saviour, who inspired many to protect their nation. There have been many rumours around the years regarding Elizabeth I and her decision to remain a virgin. She has become known as a virgin queen for this, but there is factually no evidence that she and Robert Dudley, or any other man, ever shared a bed. Dudley and a few other men would get very close to Elizabeth, but it is believed that none slept with her. There were some rumours that did emerge, though, that she even may have had a child with Dudley, which would have alluded to them sleeping together. There was even talks of Queen Victoria burning evidence which was discovered inside of a fire in her palace, relating to a possible marriage that Dudley and Queen Elizabeth I had. One of the most remarkable discoveries of the past few decades was made in a church in Bacton in Herefordshire in England. An elaborate cloth was discovered, and this had been for some time acting as an altar cloth in the church. But after investigation, it was found that this cloth was actually a dress, and was the only surviving dress belonging to Queen Elizabeth I. The cloth has an elaborate floral design, and is made from cloth of silver, and would have cost a huge sum of money. It dates from late in Elizabeth's life, and was shown in the rainbow portrait. But historians discovered that this cloth was in fact a dress, and it was placed on display inside of Hampton Court Palace, and it's believed to have been one of the only pieces of clothing that we have belonging to Elizabeth I in existence over 400 years after her death. It was a truly remarkable find. King Henry VIII was known for having a temper, but this was inherited by his daughter Elizabeth I, and she could be cutting and ruthless to people who crossed her. She would order executions even in her final days of her former friends and favourites, but she was also known for outbursts of foul language and swearing, which was not something you'd expect from a queen. It was said that, and Queen Elizabeth I even used profuse, profane swearing as a way to strengthen her hold on the English crown. She liked to sprinkle her speech with God's death, still one of the most shocking phrases a 16th century Englishwoman could utter. This was of course blasphemy at the time, was considered very shocking. Hearing the Queen shout and swear for many would be shocking, and it would ruin the image of virtue that many had of her. On the 24th of March 1603, at the age of 69 inside of Richmond Palace, Queen Elizabeth I died. In her final years she became very depressed and upset, as many of her most senior ministers and best friends also passed away. Elizabeth in her final moments was known for being vacant and deep in thought and she had given up. She did not want to get better from this final illness and succumbed to death inside of her bedchamber, attended on by the Archbishop of Canterbury and other servants. But specifically, before her death, Elizabeth had stated she did not want to be embalmed, as was traditional for kings and queens of the period. This involved the body being cut open and the organs, including the heart, lungs and intestine, and more being removed, and then buried separately from the body. These were interred somewhere important to the monarch or person, but then the body or cavity would be stuffed with herbs and spices to keep off decay. Elizabeth did not want this to happen, but regardless of her wishes, the embalming of the Queen did take place, and it's a good job that this did happen. It's believed that during the funeral procession, that her remains may have exploded, and this even splintered some of the wood of her coffin, due to the expulsion of gases. But this would have been much worse if embalming had not occurred. To begin with, Elizabeth I, the greatest Tudor monarch, was not buried in her own grave or vault. She would be interred inside of her grandmother and grandfather's vault, at the heart of the Lady Chapel inside of Westminster Abbey. She was laid to rest in the vault of King Henry VII and Elizabeth of York, and it's believed this was done as a tribute to her. But this vault would later be opened.
Elizabeth I was exhumed. King James I, in the years after Elizabeth's death, would commission a huge tomb for the former Tudor monarch. James was given the crown of England, and he had a lot of respect for Elizabeth, despite the fact she executed James's mother, Mary Queen of Scots. He had a huge tomb made for Elizabeth, which was lifelike, and it shows the former Tudor monarch lying on her back, with the crown on her head, and royal regalia in her hands. Elizabeth's coffin was removed from her vault years after her death, and it was then buried underneath the huge tomb of her, and this today is still her resting place. Finally, one of the interesting things to mention about Elizabeth I's tomb and vault is that she is not the only one lying in the burial vault. She is buried and interred directly above her half-sister Mary I, and the idea of her being above Mary is one that symbolises her power over her rival and sister and predecessor. It communicates that Elizabeth was a greater and grander monarch who had a rather important role in history. It was said when people opened the vault, the sight of this secluded and narrow tomb, this compressing in the closest grasp of the two Tudor sisters, partners of the same throne and grave, sleeping in the hope of resurrection, the solemn majesty of the great queen, this reposing, as could hardly be doubted by her own desire, on her sister's coffin, was the more impressive from the contrast of the quieter calm with the confused and multitudinous decay of the Stuart vault. But still today, Elizabeth is laid to rest on top of her sister. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.